uh, it's like we're on a theme here, right? Again, a dense thermal infiltrate. And look at that. Look at all these little tiny white circles. So we got to go way in and see what's in the circles. Circles usually mean something. Something's making the circle. It's either an artifact, it's lipid, it's mucus capsule around, it's something. But when you see little white holes in tissue, you got to stop and wonder why they're there. Can you see what's there? It's hard to see because we can't go any higher power on this, but I think it's still enough. See the little dots? Yeah. Well, that's the buzzword, right? I think kinetoplasts are imaginary things that are not real. I'm just joking. They're real, but they're so tiny that unless you have like oil immersion, I don't feel I can reliably see them. Look, I'm a board certified dermatopathologist and I'm confessing I cannot see the kinetoplasts. Kineto... It's like the emperor's clothes, right? Everyone's like, oh yeah, they're great clothes. But look at those kinetoplasts. Mm -mm. It's fake news, man. There's no kinetoplasts. I'm just joking. They do. They're protozoa. They have kinetoplasts. Diagnosis is leash mania. But in real life, they look to me, almost identical to histoplasmosis. They're the same size, they're uniform, super tiny. They are intracellular, usually within histiocytes. They tend to make these vacuoles. The one thing that's supposed to be helpful though is that in um, leash, they tend to line up around the outside of the vessels, like a Ferris wheel or a marquee sign, whatever that is, I don't know, but that's what people say. And, um, but like a Ferris wheel, right? They've got all the little cars around the outside of the circle. In the middle of the circle, there's no people in the middle. So people say that's really good for leash mania, whereas histo doesn't do that. I think things that actually help me in real life, A, I live in Arkansas. The diagnosis is histoplasmosis, okay? Because everyone in Arkansas has been exposed to histo. I've been there six years. I probably have it now too. It's really common. It's everywhere in our environment. So if someone's never been outside of our state, I'm sure they don't have leash mania, okay? Unless they happen to like keep pet sand flies at home or something, which probably not. If on the other hand, they're in the military and they've been to the Middle East, then you have to really think about that. So travel history is super important. They can also do histoplasmosis urine antigen. You can do PCR. Um, you can send, oh, by the way, for infectious stains, the CDC in Atlanta offers free, um, free consultation and they have like every immunostain and molecular test known to man. It takes a few weeks, but it's free. And I feel like in difficult infectious cases or cases where there's a real concern for infection, but we can't find organisms, I'll often send stuff to the CDC. No conflict of interest, obviously. It's a, it's a free service. It's one of the few things that I'm like, man, I'm glad I pay my taxes and it goes to that. Because it's really awesome to be able to provide such a high level of care to patients with complex um, infectious disease. So anyway, histo, I think, is the real differential here um, with leash. And both leash and sometimes histo can cause really dramatic epidermal hyperplasia that can mimic squamous cell carcinoma, right? Like pretty much as true of any angioinvasive fungus, also true of leash, where it can really make the epidermis get revved up and look like invasive squam, but it's just benign and reactive, okay? So, you know, telling reactive squamous stuff apart from neoplastic can, even with experience, I think is still challenging, and I struggle with it on an almost daily basis. Um, so anyway, uh, that's leash. And yeah, supposedly you can see little kinetoplasts. And also if you, do, um, if you do GMS, I feel, or PAS to highlight the fungi in histo, I feel like a lot of times when they, they look the same until you do the stain. And then on GMS, you can really see like little tiny budding yeast forms in histo. And obviously leash won't look like that. I think leash sometimes will pick up some of those fungal stains. It's, I don't know if it's supposed to, but I feel like it does. And GEMS is supposed to be positive in these, but I don't have a great deal of experience with using that stain here. And also, I think recently, didn't someone describe CD1A? There's like one clone of CD1A, the Langerhans marker, for some wild reason has a like cross reactivity with leash. I've not tried that yet, but it's been, it's a thing. You can look it up. I, I'm sure it's a thing. But it's, I think it's only some clones, some weird cross reactivity. Like the, I think of the marquee sign is similar to the Ferris wheel, right? The round circle. And I feel like this is actually about as class, even though it's a little hard to see here the, on the, on this big screen because they're pale. I think this is actually about as good as I've seen it because every single circle has organisms just around, like, let me find a good one, just around the outside. See, they're like all around the outside. There's a few that have them in the middle, but most of them are empty circles with little dots around the periphery. Like right there, look at that. See little dots around the periphery. Dot, 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 dot. And in the middle is nothing. The same over here, dots around the outside. That's leash. That's the buzzword, the classic. All right, so there's leash mania. Uh, 